Fine. Okay. So today, before going into the new lesson or new topic, I think uh, you have finished your project, the assignment which I have given. Some of you, like 25 of you have submitted the assignment. So what about the remaining students? So those who haven't able to send it, I told you to keep it with you, right? I hope it's uh, you guys are having with having it with you. So probably when we are discussing about the assignment, maybe we'll just discuss about like you can able to show your assignments as well. Okay, I want you to write your name in that assignment and keep it very safely because it's for your exam. All right, so keep it safely. So those who haven't submitted, Yes, you can do it maybe on your next class. Okay, we'll just discuss about your assignments. So two assignments I have given for your summative. One is that egg, okay? That egg assignment and uh, that's also for that also only 25 of you or 22 of you have submitted. What about the remaining? So it's for your exam. So kindly try to submit or try to bring, send it to me, okay? Um, I have received some of your activity okay all right so before going into the topic i would like to ask you certain questions so can you just tell me what is called as adolescent what is adolescent so yes we are in your unit chapter 10 uh, reaching the age of adolescence all right so can you just tell me what is meant by what is meant by the word adolescent are you having any idea regarding the word adolescent Yeah, yeah, I have received, I have received. Yes, very good. Teenage, mature, below adult, all right. So adolescent, okay. Adolescent is nothing but the people, like both the boy as well as the girl who is reaching the age of puberty, okay. So after that comes the adolescence, the age of adolescence. Yes, growth and development, very good. Uh, Okay, very good. So it's between 13 to 19 years. Very good. All right. So that's called as adolescent. So from 13 till 19, you will be called as that age. Okay, so that's called as an adolescent age. So you will be having certain kinds of your body changes, your external development, your internal development. So everything will be changing accordingly. So it changes according. So you'll be trying to become an adult so that body will cooperate and that helps you to become an adult so that's called as the age of adolescence all right so what are the changes when you reach the age of adolescence is mainly the puberty so like you will become uh, you will be going to the next level of uh, your life that is the puberty so that time what happens certain kinds of uh, characters again and also the certain kinds of secondary characters secondary development will also be taking place in your body okay so that's why they have told that the legal marriage for uh, both the male as well as the female is from 18 till 21 years okay so but now what have what they have done they are they, they are under a talk for female maybe it can extend up to 21 so maybe maybe uh two to three years after like 21 will be the legal age for a female to get married so they are just uh, the speaking okay but uh, that is also a very good kind of uh, what the, uh, from 18 till 21 21 is a very good age for the females to get married okay so uh, not 18 but 21 you because why because we are you will be mentally uh, girls will be mentally prepared and also they'll be like mess mentally and physically strong because they will be going to the next kind of next phase of development like the birth and the motherhood and everything they their body has to cooperate so that's why they're called legal age for a marriage it's 18 so before you below that if you do it's called as child marriage and they'll be putting them into the jail okay so it's not legal it's not it's very illegal okay so that's called as adolescence all right not 10 13 from 13 you call them as adolescent because teen okay teen age our adolescent age so once you attain the puberty you will be calling it as adolescent okay so when girls are attaining at the age of 10 again they'll be reaching the adolescent age also okay all right so certain kinds of names are there for your lesson okay so i don't want you to open your books now just listen to what i'm i taking 
So you have certain important words. One will be the exocrine gland and the next one is the endocrine gland. So exocrine and endocrine. Okay, so they will be coming under gland. Okay, so glands, what is this glands? Glands are called like, uh, it, uh, it will be present inside your body and they'll be doing certain kinds of activities. So that's called as gland. Okay, so exocrine gland and endocrine gland. And next is the ductus gland and hormones. So these are some of the important words or important terms you should know, you should uh, memory or you should have to uh, note it down for this uh, lesson. Okay, so you call, you call them as endocrine gland, exocrine gland, ductless glands, and hormones. Okay, so this is this will be your. Uh, new lesson reaching the age of adolescent okay so uh, if you call this reaching the age of adolescent you call them as uh, exocrine gland endocrine gland so exocrine the word exo exocrine means you call this exocrine gland as duct gland so what is called as duct gland? So here you have this ductless gland. Again, uh, ductless gland will be joining or you call the endocrine gland as ductless gland and you call the exocrine uh, gland as duct gland. Okay. So the word duct, duct plays a major difference in both the exocrine as well as the endocrine gland. Okay, so how is this playing major role? Fine, so exocrine, the word exocrine gland means they have certain kind of duct. So when you take a, a sweat gland, okay, for example, if you take sweat, sweat gland or salivary gland, okay, if you take salivary gland, so what happens, salivary glands are situated in your uh, cheek, like here in this area. So whenever the saliva is needed, it will be produced, okay? So they have certain kind of passage-like thing. So vessel-like uh, structure and they will be passing in that vessel and they'll be reaching the uh, area where the saliva has to be produced. So they have certain kind of pathway and that's why you call the exocrine gland as duct gland. Example, like epithelial tissues, Probably the epithelial cells or epithelial tissues plays a vital role in the exocrine gland. Okay, so in the exocrine part, these play a major role. And when you talk about the endocrine gland, endocrine gland is also called as ductless gland. Why it is called as ductless gland? Because this endocrine gland, what happens here is they don't have any specific pathway, but what they'll be doing is they'll be passing mainly into the bloodstream of every individual. So maybe if, if an endocrine gland is situated near your uh, brain part, what happens from there? It cannot, it doesn't have a particular pathway. Instead, what happens is from that, it reaches the brain, bloodstream, the circulatory stream okay so from the circulatory stream it just passes to to wherever that particular uh, uh, hormones will be will have to go so that's what endocrine gland is all about so what is the difference between endocrine and the exocrine gland okay so first thing is they are duct gland and endocrine gland is ductless gland to have another example so another type difference between exocrine as well as the endocrine gland so what is it so this exocrine gland secretes enzymes Okay, so you call the exocrine enzyme, you call that particular secretion of exocrine gland as enzymes. Okay, and you call the endocrine gland, the secretion of endocrine gland as hormones. So you call the exocrine gland as enzymes and you call the endocrine gland secretion as hormones. And these two different uh, exocrine and endocrine gland has different uh, a target organ or target system and they'll be working accordingly. So when you take about, talk about the exocrine gland, this exocrine gland example includes sweat glands, salivary glands, and when you talk about the endocrine gland, you call you have certain kinds of example as thyroid gland, maybe thyroid gland, pituitary gland, 
and they have certain everything works for a very different purpose so these are the major difference between the exocrine gland and the endocrine gland so first exocrine gland they are called as duct glands and they have certain kind of payment or pathway for secreting the enzyme and when you talk about the endocrine gland, they are called as ductless gland and they don't have certain kind of pathway. So that's why they are called as ductless gland. They directly goes into the muscles or in the bloodstream. Okay. And uh, example, exocrine gland secretes enzymes and endocrine gland secretes hormones. Example of exocrine gland is sweat gland and salt uh, salivary gland. And the example of endocrine gland is thyroid gland or pituitary gland. Okay, so this will be the major difference between the exocrine gland and the endocrine gland. I hope you are clear with this. Are you clear with whatever I am teaching now? I have taught you now. Or should I have to teach it again? Okay, so you are clear. Alright, now tell me what is called as exocrine gland. Now tell me what is called as exocrine gland. Just in one word. Can you just tell me what is called as exocrine gland? Yes, of course I will teach it again. Yes, of course I will teach again. No problem. Fine, I will just teach you again. Alright. So exocrine gland. They have certain target vessels. So, they will be passing in certain vessels or epithelial epithelial cells. Okay. So, they have certain kinds of uh, payment or pathway. So, if salivary gland is present here, they have a certain payment and the target area. Okay. So, if you uh, mouth, maybe you can just take mouth as the target area. So, from the salivary some the salivary gland, the what it secretes is enzymes will be secreted. Okay, so enzymes, enzymes. Uh, can you able to see the board? Is it clear? Can you able to see it? All right. Is it glaring? Yes, yes, just, just, just a minute, just a minute. I'll just write it again, no? I'll just write it again. So, Exocrine gland, exocrine, okay, so exocrine gland, what happens? It secretes, it will be secreted in the epithelial cells or you call them as vessels, so probably vessels, etc. Et so they will be secreting enzymes, okay. They will be secreting enzymes. Right? So, exocrine gland will be secreting enzyme. Uh, if you take sweat, that salivary gland, so this will be salivary gland, they have certain kind of payment pathway. You call it as a pathway. Okay. So, when you take the circulatory system, so for, for example, if you take the circulatory system or when you take the heart, okay, so one major example is heart. You have, you would have known about arteries and veins, right? I think you're, you're very clear with the arteries and veins. So, what happens? It pumps the blood through the arteries and everything it comes out. So, all. So, that particular heart has some kind of external thing. To, be, to carry, that blood is carried through certain kind of arteries or certain kinds of veins. So similarly, here the salivary gland has certain pathway to sec, uh, uh, join the target organ, target part. So maybe mouth will be the target part. So you will be getting the saliva in the mouth only no. So this uh, salivary gland will have certain pathway and it reaches the mouth part. Okay, so that's called as excretory, uh, sorry, ex endo exocrine gland. So this, you call this pathway as a duct. You call that particular pathway, 
we call that particular uh, pathway as duct. Okay, so why you call that as a duct? Because it paves a way. Uh, so river, what happened? River stream, what it paves a way, right? So maybe in the agricultural land, a way will be there, a pathway will be there. What is that pathway? So that water will be flowing in that pathway and reaches a particular uh, farm land. So similarly, this uh, saliva, the enzyme will be having certain kind of way which reaches the a particular target organ okay so they'll be reaching the particular target organ so that's called as the duct you call that particular area as a duct so exocrine gland will also be called as a duct why because they have certain pathway and that exocrine gland secretion of that exocrine gland will be called as an enzyme are you clear with the exocrine part are you clear with the exocrine part so example is uh, salivary glands, you can call it as salivary gland, okay, salivary glands, sweat glands, so they, they are coming under the exocrine part. All right, fine. Now, moving on to the endocrine organ or endocrine, endocrine gland. Okay, so endocrine gland, when you talk about the endocrine gland, again, they, they will be called as ductless gland. They are called as duct less so why they are called as ductless okay why they are called as ductless human body will be uh, from the area from your head till your toe okay so it's a very big area okay so this totally this uh, endocrine part so probably everyone will everything one one part of endocrine gland will be secret uh, will be present in one one part of the area so probably in the brain okay so here you can you can just find it or probably in this part you can just find it so uh, there from there it has to reach the target organ so pro when for example i'm just taking pituitary gland okay this pituitary gland alone. So it's, I think uh, you would have known about the pituitary gland. So I'll just take the pituitary gland. Okay, so pituitary gland where it is located. The location of the pituitary gland is in the brain. So near the brain or behind the brain. Okay, so they'll be, uh, they'll, they are just found behind or in the part here only really you can able to find the pituitary gland. So from this, it has to reach the ovary or testis of male or female. Okay, so where is this testis or um, uh, where is this ovary or testis located? It is near, below the abdomen you can find. So from this pituitary gland, from this part, it has to reach your abdomen. So how it can reach? It does not have one specific place. It, it, it actually don't have any specific place. Okay, so what it does goes, it goes into the blood stream. It goes into the blood stream. So blood stream is the only major thing you can just find all over your body. So through the muscles or through the area, you can just find all the blood streams, right? So it, what this endocrine gland, it does, it, it just passes on to the blood stream and it reaches the target arm or again. So it does not have a particular payment or a particular pathway. So that's why they are called as ductless gland. So what is this ductless gland? It does it. The endocrine gland does not have any pathway to go. So it just goes into the bloodstream of every individual to attain or to find the target organ. So that is called also that's called as the endocrine gland. So the secretion of endocrine gland is called as hormones. You call them as hormones. Okay. So this is what endocrine and exocrine is all about. I hope you're clear with what is called as endocrine and what is called as exocrine. So endocrine is nothing but it does not have specific Target, like it does not have specific area to go hence it goes into the bloodstream of every individual so the secretion is called as hormones and it's also called as ductless organ while the endocrine gland the endocrine is called as duct because the, the secretion of the endocrine is called as enzyme and the, the target organ they have particular place particular area to go inside that. So that's called as an exocrine and an endocrine gland. So ductless gland, I call this as duct gland. So example includes 
endocrine is pituitary gland, thyroid gland, adrenal gland, lots of examples. And, and for your exocrine is the sweat uh, gland and salivary glands. You're clear with it? No, no, I think you will be having another exam also. Yes, exocrine have ducts and secretes enzymes, whereas endocrine does not have ducts, so it's, does, it's called as ductless organ, and it secretes hormones. Very good, very good, very good, Soyana. Yes, that's the right one. All right, so I hope you're clear with these two, right? Exocrine as well as the endocrine. Are you clear with it? Are you clear with what is called as exocrine gland and what's called as endocrine gland? Um, okay. All right. I hope you're clear. Very good. I am. Okay, Ram. No problem. Yes, of course, you will be having your SA3. Fine. Okay. So, please do turn on to page number 140. Please do turn on to page number 140. So, there you have been given the definition for your exocrine gland as well as the endocrine gland. So, your definition for your exocrine gland so, there are two types of glands in the body. One will be called as duct and the other is without the duct. So, duct and duct is gland. So, please do underline the definition for exocrine gland. A gland that releases its product onto the epithelial surface through a duct is called as exocrine gland. So, that's the definition for your exocrine gland. A gland that releases its products onto the epithelial surface through a duct is called as exocrine gland. So example includes sweat glands and the salivary glands. So that will be the definition for your exocrine gland and your endocrine gland. The definition goes by a gland that has no duct and releases its products directly into the bloodstream is called as endocrine gland. So they are also called as ductless gland so this is the your definition for your endocrine gland and uh, you have certain kinds of glands that makes up the human body it includes pituitary gland thyroid gland adrenal gland pancreas ovaries and testes that is the gametes both the male and the female gametes that is ovaries in the male and the testes in the female all right so when you talk about the pancreas you have one special character of pancreas one special character for this pancreas. So you call this as both the exocrine gland as well as the endocrine gland. So both the exocrine part as well as the endocrine part, this pancreas will be doing it. Okay. Pancreas is also called as both the exocrine as well as the endocrine because it secretes both the enzymes, both the enzymes will also be secreting in the pancreas as well as the hormones. So when, when it is needed, so when the enzyme is needed, maybe for digestion, when enzymes are needed, it secretes and may, maybe for some of the hormonal problem and hormonal meaning, maybe for insulin production or not, hormones will be secreted from the pancreas okay so this is what the major so now this is one of the special character in the pancreas because it acts as both the exocrine gland as well as the endocrine gland so exocrine it secretes the enzymes and endocrine it secretes the hormones and the target or again the target of the exocrine and endocrine varies from it's varying it's totally different from one another so you have certain endocrine gland endocrine glands includes pituitary gland so maybe pituitary gland behind your uh, the brain stem, okay? Maybe below the hypothalamus, you have your brain, right? In that brain, you have one hypothalamus part, okay? So that part near the hypothalamus or below the hypothalamus, you can able to find the pituitary gland. And thyroid, you already know, near the voice box or in this area, you can able to find the thyroid gland. So thyroid here, you can press it. And the adrenal gland and the pancreas in your abdomen area, so near the stomach, you can just find the adrenal and the pancreas and ovaries. And again, in your below the lower abdomen and testes again in male, you can just find the target areas. So this is this is what your endocrine uh, endocrine part is all about. Okay. Uh, now we'll just see the PPT. Some of maybe you can just find the pictures, and uh, we'll just move on to the 
Next topic, if time permits. Okay, so this will be your endocrine part. So uh, you can just find in all your all the parts of your body. You can just find your endocrine part, not only in one particular place, but in all of all parts of your body. You can just find the endocrine system or endocrine part. So it has possesses versatile communication system and coordinates the biological function. So all your body functions will be major. It will be coordinated in your endocrine system only. So what are the uh regions where and all it can you can find it and where what are the uh process it does so it controls long-term activities it controls the physiological so physiological is nothing but moving okay so you're moving the physiological process it controls even your nervous system so every nervous system is also be controlled so they are also called as ductless gland and lastly uh, you call hormones you have these hormones that is it goes into the directly into the bloodstream so it's also called as chemical substances or chemical messenger so hormones is also called as chemical substances or chemical messenger uh, moving on to functions okay so they have certain types of functions so they uh produce this multiple hormones so when you talk about uh harm uh pituitary gland alone okay so probably when you talk about pituitary gland so you have this pituitary gland so pituitary gland they have lo uh, lots and lots of uh, hormones releasing in one particular area so when you talk about pituitary gland maybe on next class i'll just teach you so you have two kinds of uh, two lobe okay so you call that as anterior pituitary and you call another as uh, posterior pituitary so they se they secrete different kinds of hormones from one pituitary itself these more are uh, like more than than five to six hormones are secreted so that's why the function is called as multiple hormone they produces multiple hormones and single hormones can be secreted from more than one endocrine so probably from one endocrine gland you can um, maybe the hypothalamus and the pancreas secretes the somatostatin so these are uh, some kinds of hormones probably we'll be discussing in your later classes and hormones are responsible for intracellular communication all the intracellular communication is done by the hormones and single hormone has more than one type of target cell probably other you have the target cells okay so cells targeting will also be different from one another so promotion of structural changes in your body so all the structural changes your the outward appearances are specially changed with the help of the endocrine glands only so major glands so it includes the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, parathyroid gland, thyroid gland, adrenal gland, pancreas, ovaries in female and testes in male. So these are some of the major glands which can be seen. So you can just find, see, you can just find the hypothalamus near your brain. So here you can just find your thyroid gland, maybe on the tanya below the chest you can just find, okay, and above the kidney the adrenal glands are located and uh, near the stomach you can find the pancreas and again in the male uh, you can find the testicle in the reproductive part and the ovaries again in the in that area only you can also find the female reproductive that is female gamut also so these are some of the major glands that helps in the endocrine function i hope you're clear with it okay so no everything everyone will be having the thyroid uh, so you have, you, I think you're talking about the, how to find the thyroid, um, thyroid gland will also be produced, but uh, what the thing is, thyroid will be secreting certain kinds of hormones, you call it as uh, thyroxine or T3 or T4 hormones, so that will be helping, uh, probably that helps in your menstrual process also, so I think you're talking about it, uh, if you want to find about, then you are you having thyroid problem or not, you, I think it's better to take the blood test, so if you take the blood test, maybe you can able to find whether you have thyroid problem or not. Okay, so the best thing is from your doctor prescription, they'll be helping you to take blood test. Okay, okay, so 
fine a medical yes of course but the major thing is you can able to if you touch itself when uh, normally the gland will be very small okay so when the people when they are having some thyroid problem it will be a little bit bulged in nature so while touching itself they can able to find it whether they have thyroid problem or not um how it will affect okay hormones yes hormones are called as chemical messengers they are called as chemical substances certain kinds of chemicals okay so in chemistry lab you can find some of the chemicals right they'll be doing certain kinds of work so likewise hormones they are also called as chemicals they'll be going into one particular part and they'll be doing activity okay so from maybe for your uh, menstrual cycle example menstrual cycle when you take you need certain kinds of hormones uh, like uh, luteinizing hormone or uh, parathy uh, sorry sorry luteinizing hormone as such follicular stimulating hormone so once the follicular stimulating hormone goes inside the uh, ovary only the uh, ovum will be releasing so that hormone when it has to go into that particular ovum and it has to release so it's that's the chemical messenger so that's what hormone is known about okay um what thyroid sorry i couldn't able to understand your thyroid ah uh, okay how it will affect okay thyroid when you talk about the thyroid when thyroid problem is there you can able to find the gigantism so uh, i'll just yeah that all the things you have certain kinds of problems when thyroid is not produced probably pro maybe we'll just see it in the next classes okay you need not worry i'll just teach you during the next class okay so i hope you're clear with it right all right okay then thank you thank you thank you